Who shot Tupac? Why would someone want Biggie Smalls dead? With no actual evidence to back it up, various outlets over the years have tried to tie the unsolved murders to one man, Marion Suge Knight. What up, Suge? What up, Suge? How you doing, man? But that's all baseless rumor and speculation. What's not is that Suge Knight is currently sitting in jail and awaiting trial for what prosecutors claim is his part in the fatal hit and run of a man named Terry Carter. Well, it looks like he uh, drove backwards and struck the victims and then went forward and struck them again as he left. January 29th, Suge Knight crashes a shoot for the movie Straight Outta Compton then argues with film advisor and former gang member Clee Bone Sloan. After leaving the set, Suge arranges a meeting with Terry, a well-known mediator in the hip-hop community. Minutes later, Suge pulls up to the agreed location in what is about to become a deadly weapon. Suddenly, Sloan runs out of the shadows, apparently ready to continue the fight. Then, as Klee and Suge trade blows through the driver's side window, Suge hits reverse and Klee is thrown to the ground. This is where Terry steps in. Your father was the peacemaker. Yes. Do you think that day, in that parking lot, he was trying to keep the peace? Yes, absolutely. I think that's what he was doing when he walked up. But by then, tensions had boiled over. I saw them trying to relieve somebody on the floor, but I didn't see a face. And I think they had like like a white smock over him. So they were they were trying to uh, you know give him CPR or uh, bring him back. How did you find out that your father was gone? I received a phone call um, from one of his childhood friends, and he kind of just told me right there over the phone. He said, uh, "Nikaya," and I said, "Yes." He said. Um, your dad's been killed. I didn't know how severe the accident was, and I found out when I got to the hospital, actually, on the screen in the waiting room. That's how I found out. Terry Carter, the playmaker, the peacekeeper, a real man with a family, was gone. How's his other half doing? She's, she's getting by, but it's, it's hard, you know. It's very, very difficult for her. Um, you know, they were together for a long time. If you had ever been around the two of them, it was very comical, you know? <laughs> and you could tell it was all, all about love, you know? It was all about love. As for Cleese Lone, though badly injured after being run over twice, he survives. Shortly after the incident, he agrees to give a recorded statement to LAPD. So you're up on the door now. Do you guys engage again? Yeah, I see. You start. Yeah. Is he mixing it up with you back and forth? He's mixing it up. He's with his, with his thing, and I caught him real good. He's... Okay, so you're fighting at the window again. Mm -hmm. Get him good. Gotcha. I definitely was enraged, man. I definitely good. was out of control. The dialogue. What were you guys saying? The only thing, one thing to say it, when I caught him real good in that driveway, like everything stopped. So I'm like, cute. Next thing I know, it's when everything kind of turned into a dream. I don't know what happened after that. It's not until the day after Clee and Terry are run down that Marion Suge Knight turns himself in. Good luck with this, Suge. Okay. Right away, authorities treat the case with the utmost seriousness. We know, uh, as everyone's been reporting, that that was Suge Knight that was involved in this. We're handling that as a homicide. It's a conclusion Clee's statement to police seemed to back up. Some are cute. But Sloan has since refused to testify, saying, quote, I'm no snitch and will not be used to send Knight to prison. Is there some concern for you that he may not cooperate with this case and with this investigation? No, there's no concern whatsoever. There is a tape and also his initial testimony, what he already stated. So um, there's no concern. Suge has pleaded not guilty of any wrongdoing. And so far, his various lawyers, because there have been many, are claiming self-defense. Either way, a judge has set his bail at an astronomical $10 million, a decision that led to this dramatic courtroom panic attack. Suge Knight said he was trying to get away because he was in fear of his life. You saw that video. I saw it. Did that look like fear? 
to you? It's like anger, in a sense, to say someone that was angry and intentionally trying to do harm to someone. Everyone can see a video. If you ask me who killed him, then obviously yes. Now who's responsible, I guess, could be a different question. And that's a big question the family wants answered. In addition to the murder case against Suge, Terry's family is pursuing civil action against Knight, the producers of the film, and other parties they feel responsible for the tragic circumstances. I could never replace my father, number one, by any kind of dollar amount at all. I wish I could turn back the time and just have my dad and not have a civil case. In my opinion, you know, there was a lot of negligence on set, on hiring certain individuals, and, you know, it's like a domino effect. I think there were some things that were um, a little bit just, you know, a little bit foreseeable, in my opinion. Crime Watch Daily has reached out to Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, and NBC Universal for comment. And defense attorney Mark Harris, who represents all three parties, gave us this statement. It's a tragic situation. I feel like we don't belong in this case. Regardless of how the civil suit is resolved, if convicted on criminal charges, it will be Marion Knight's third felony. Under California's three-strike rule, he could go away for life. But the fact that Suge Knight even has a future to contemplate is a luxury taken from Terry Carter, and a community is left mourning. Well, he had about, I don't know, 2,000 people coming to his funeral. It's crazy. I didn't know my dad had that kind of impact on people. You know, he had people flying out from Japan, New York, Florida. You know, it was just amazing. Here at the Inglewood Park Cemetery is where Terry Carter was laid to rest. At rest, but not yet in peace. Not until, his family says, justice has been done. It's too much going on in my mind for him to fully rest in peace. That's just my personal feeling on it. And at some point, I'll have to, um, sorry. I'll have to, uh, I guess finally let him go, you know? I guess all this time is like, um, not thinking he's here, but because it's so much trauma and there's so much stuff, it kind of feels like I'm still doing stuff for dad. I'm still fighting. Right. So yeah, once that's done, I can really say rest in peace um, and really mean it, then that's when I can finally proceed on with life.